Hello friends, this video on electric circuits part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched part 1, 2 and 3 before going ahead with part 4. Internal resistance. Resistance is something which you are familiar with, right? What is resistance? It is nothing but a property which opposes the flow of current. So, what it might be when we say internal resistance that means it is some resistance which is present internally with respect to a cell that means inside the cell there is some resistance which is offered to the current flow so let us have a look it is the resistance offered by the electrolyte and electrodes when current flows so inside the cell you have electrolyte and electrodes right so this electrolyte and electrodes they itself try to oppose the flow of current so the resistance which they offer that is known as internal resistance since this resistance is internal to the cell so it is known as internal resistance so it is denoted by a small r so that is how we uh, differentiate between an external resistance in a circuit and an internal resistance internal resistance is always small r and external resistance is always a capital r so that means when the current flows this electrodes also try to provide give some resistance to the flow of current as well as the electrolyte so that is your internal resistance the next topic which we will study is emf of a cell what is electromotive force of a cell this is the most important thing to study when we talk of a cell so what is emf of a cell emf is the full form of emf is electromotive force i have also talked about emf when we were studying the previous chapter that is the chapter on current electricity right I told you that this electromotive force is not an not a force exactly it is basically the potential difference between the two electrodes of the cell I told you that inside the cell you have two electrodes right one electrode is your positive electrode and the other electrode is the negative electrode now why is one electrode positive electrode because one elect one electrode has more electrons deposited on it so that becomes the negative electrode and the other electrode is deficit of electrons that is it has scarcity of electrons so that becomes the positive electrode so there is a potential difference between these two electrodes when no current is drawn from the cell that means if the cell is just kept on the table that means nobody knows it is not connected to any circuit that means no current is being drawn from the cell the cell is not giving any current right so when the cell is not in a closed circuit when the cell is in an open circuit the potential difference between the two electrodes is known as emf so emf is the potential difference between electrodes when there is no current in the cell that means when the cell is in an open circuit so no one is drawing any current from this cell so it is a misnomer because many people think that since it is electromotive force that means it is some force but it is basically not a force it is the potential difference right so the name is a misnomer it it should it should have not been like that but still it is named as electromotive force now why is it called electromotive force because this basically acts as an initiating force for the current to flow in a circuit i mean what initiates current to flow in a circuit the current in a circuit flows due to the cell and what is in the cell that initiates the current flow that is this emf that is the emf of the cell initiates a current flow in the circuit so since it acts as and the initiating force therefore it is known as the electromotive force however it is not a force physically it is basically the potential difference now let us try to understand this emf with the explanation or with the help of the internal working of the cell what did i tell you when i was talking about this galvanic cell i told you that now you forget about the external circuit so here i have not drawn the external circuit at all because right now when i am talking of emf the cell is in open circuit that means it is not connected these two electrodes are not connected at all so when the cell is like this what do you think how will the potential difference develop i told you that this zinc 
always has a tendency to lose two electrons and become zinc ion that means zinc always have a tendency to lose two electrons and become zinc ion similarly copper has a tendency of accepting two electrons and becoming copper right so these two things will happen whether it is connected to an external circuit or not it is independent of that right because it this this is something which is the inherent property of zinc and copper right so now zinc wants to lose two electrons but what is the urge of zinc to lose those two electrons for example for example i say that i want to have an ice cream today evening right that is one statement that which just tells that i want to have ice cream but how badly i want to have an ice cream today itself that depends on my on the intensity of my wish whether i am flexible to have it today or tomorrow or i want it today itself so what is that urge how much urge do i have to fulfill my wish that has to be defined right similarly here also zinc wants to lose two electrons but what is the in intensity of its wish what is the intensity of zinc to lose two electrons and become zinc ion that is basically defined by a potential how do we define potential it is nothing but energy per unit coulomb we say that the amount of energy which is involved for zinc to lose two electrons is let us say some energy so that energy per unit coulomb is defined in terms of volt right are you getting my point if i say that zinc wants to lose two electrons there when zinc loses two electrons there has to be some energy associated with it some amount of energy is required for zinc to lose two electrons and become zinc ion right so that energy per unit charge is defined as a potential correct so there is a potential associated with this reaction where zinc becomes zinc ion similarly there is a potential associated with this reaction where copper ion becomes copper so let us say this is v1 volt and this is v2 volt right so that means this electrode when i look at the zinc electrode it is at some potential v1 with respect to the electrolyte similarly when i look at the copper electrode the copper electrode is at some potential v2 with respect to the electrolyte so as a result there is a difference in potential between the two electrodes zinc and copper now if you look at it since zinc is losing two electrons and becoming zinc plus we say that so basically what is happening the electrons are moving the electrons are getting lost from zinc so zinc is coming from the electrode to the electrolyte so if we say that this electrode that is the zinc electrode is at a potential v1 higher with that the electrolyte if zinc is at a higher potential than the electrolyte then this copper will be at a lower potential than the electrolyte because copper is gaining electrons and zinc is losing electrons so zinc and copper are undergoing two reverse processes right therefore how do we define emf emf is nothing but the potential difference between zinc and copper electrodes so what will be that potential difference that potential difference will be nothing but the potential of zinc with respect to the electrolyte which is v1 minus the potential of copper with respect to the electrolyte which will be minus v2 why minus v2 as i told you before also in case of zinc zinc is losing electron to become zinc plus but here copper is gaining electrons to become copper so therefore here the sign will change because copper is at a lower potential so anything a charge will flow from higher potential to lower potential right so in case of zinc since zinc is losing two electrons and becoming zinc plus ion that means zinc is jumping from the electrode to the 
electrolyte so it is jumping from higher potential to lower potential but in this case the copper is jumping from the electrolyte to the electrode so that means the electrolyte is at a higher potential and the electrode is at a lower potential right so this is at a higher potential than this here this is at a higher potential than this so the potential of zinc with respect to electrolyte is V1 minus the potential of copper with respect to electrolyte is minus V2. So the EMF will be, EMF which is generally denoted by capital E will be equal to V1 plus V2. So here if you see this EMF that is the potential difference between the two electrodes it exists without the presence of the external circuit. So right now there is no external circuit. So this EMF arises only because of the urge of, the, of zinc to lose electrons and become zinc ion and the urge of copper to accept those two electrons and become copper. Right? Now when you study about different types of cells you have something else instead of zinc and copper but still the basic funda remains the same. So this is all about EMF. So that is why whenever you look at your circuits you say that you have a battery of EMF 12 volts. What does that mean? That means if you keep that battery on the table you don't do anything with it the difference in the the potential difference between the two electrodes of the battery is 12 volts. Right? That is what it tells us. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.